On the 2nd of June 1948, one of the most disgusting war criminals of the Second World War was brought to the gallows inside Landsberg Prison for his execution. He had been condemned alongside a number of other evil guards and doctors who worked inside of the concentration camps, but this was a man who had an intricate knowledge of the Nazi party, and also specifically the Führer. Karl Brandt was Adolf Hitler's doctor, and he was a physician who treated him for a number of problems alongside other doctors and medical officials, and he frequently accompanied the dictator when he went on visits as he was his escort doctor. But Karl Brandt was a barbaric man who was responsible for a programme that led to the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of people, and he was also accused of human experimentation and other horrors. Welcome to the Untold Past. Join us today as we look at the disgusting crimes of Hitler's doctor, and to support our channel, click subscribe down below. Karl Brandt joined the Nazi party in January 1932, and it was a matter of months after this that he first met Adolf Hitler for the first time. Brandt had trained as a medical doctor and a surgeon, and he was a specialist in head and spinal injuries and problems, and following his meeting with Hitler, he then joined the paramilitary group of the SS on the 29th of July 1934. He was made an Untersturmführer, and from summer 1934, he then became Hitler's escort physician, and he would accompany the dictator on various different state occasions and visits, in case he needed treating there and then. But inside of Nazi Germany, he embarked in his horrific work with the policies of the government, and his work brought much terror and evil. In 1933, the Nazis issued the law for the prevention of hereditary diseased offspring, and in this Brandt performed terminations on many women who were pregnant, but were deemed by the Nazis to be either mentally or physically disabled, racially impure, or genetically disordered. Because of this, Brandt carried out hundreds of horrific actions upon women, and these had been legalised by the Nazi government. Then he continued to slaughter and got involved in mass murder. On the 25th of July 1939, Karl Brandt authorised the first murders of the Nazi eugenics programme, and specifically he ordered the killing of a five-month-old disabled German boy. In September 1939, Brandt was given further responsibilities and jobs by Adolf Hitler to head up the Action T4 programme. The goal of this was for the Nazis to kill people with mental and physical disabilities, and the Nazis believed this would cleanse the Aryan master race of people who were said to have been a burden inside Hitler's Germany. This programme was the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of people, and Brandt was in control of this. He was very senior in the planning, and he began in 1939 to organise the secret killing of disabled children. Then doctors and midwives were ordered to report infants who showed signs of disabilities so they could be targeted. The Nazis even began to appeal to parents to send their own children to a number of different paediatric clinics across Germany and Austria, but the reality was that these clinics were killing centres where medical staff slaughtered them by lethal injection. The Action T4 programme was extended on a huge scale, and it included the killing of adult disabled patients living inside of institutions, and Hitler passed this law himself signing off on it. In this, Karl Brandt, along with Führer Chancellery Director Philipp Buhler, created a number of sites where gas chambers were made inside to kill many people at once. Sites such as Hadamar and Hartheim Castle were made killing centres, and on buses thousands of people were sent there. They believed they would be cared for by the doctors and nurses employed at the site, and they would then be taken into a gas chamber within hours of them arriving there. Also, there were crematorias made in these sites, which dealt specifically with the bodies straight after. Families often were sent notification of their loved ones' deaths, and most of the time indicated was a false cause of death, such as a heart attack, but the reality was that they were gassed and murdered. The programme was secret, and the plans were made by Brandt and other organisers to ensure it stayed that way. But some did find out, and there was criticism in religious circles. It's believed that between 275,000 and 300,000 people were killed under the Action T4 programme, which was led by Karl Brandt. It was later said at Brandt's trial that Karl Brandt unlawfully, willfully and knowingly committed crimes against humanity in that he was principal in, accessory to, ordered, abetted, took a consenting part in 
and was connected with the plans and enterprises involving the execution of the so-called euthanasia program of the German Reich, in the course of which defendants herein murdered hundreds of thousands of human beings, including German citizens, as well as civilians of other nations. Karl Brandt believed that the health of society was more important than the health of those people living inside of it, and he was a cruel and heartless man. He had little code of ethics. Brandt and Hitler debated on the best way of killing people in the Action T4 programme, and Hitler allegedly claimed to ask, what is the most humane way, with Brandt responding with using carbon monoxide gas, and Hitler then approved this. He continued his involvement in the campaign until the end of the war, and Brandt had an intricate knowledge of the inner circle of Hitler's government. He frequently visited Hitler's different residences, and he was part of the very close people who attended everything with Hitler, alongside Martin Bormann. He was well liked by the dictator, and was close friends with Albert Speer, Hitler's architect. Brandt was later appointed the Reich Commissioner for Sanitation and Health, making him technically the most senior doctor within Nazi Germany. He had a house close to Hitler's, but at the end of the war Hitler was furious with him, as he found out that Brandt had sent his wife and their son towards American lines, so they did not fall into the hands of the Soviet Red Army. With this, he sentenced his former doctor to death, and was actually sentenced to death by Hitler himself. But Heinrich Himmler and Albert Speer stepped in and saved Karl Brandt from being shot by an SS official. One thing to consider also is that under his leadership and in his department, many SS doctors carried out horrific experiments upon people and prisoners inside the concentration camps. He was brought to trial at the end of the war and was tried inside of the doctor's trial. He was charged with four counts, the first being conspiracy to commit war crimes and crimes against humanity, the second being war crimes, which included medical experiments and torture, along with other inhumane acts. He was also accused in this of planning and performing the mass murder of prisoners of war and civilians of occupied countries, stigmatised as aged, insane, incurably ill, deformed and so on by gas, lethal injections and other diverse means in nursing homes, hospitals and asylums, during the Action T4 programme, and participating in the mass murder of concentration camp inmates. Further charges of crimes against humanity and being a member of the SS were also included. It was claimed at trial that the defendants in this case were charged with murders, tortures and other atrocities committed in the name of medical science. The victims of these crimes are numbered in the hundreds of thousands. A handful only are still alive. A few survivors will appear in the courtroom but most of these miserable victims were slaughtered outright or died in the course of the tortures to which they were subjected to. For the most part, they are nameless dead. To their murderers, these wretched people were not individuals at all. They came in wholesale lots and were treated worse than animals. For his crimes, Karl Brandt was sentenced to death and despite a number of pleas for clemency going in, including shockingly from members of the church, Karl Brandt was sent to Landsberg Prison to await his death sentence. He wrote around this time that, in order to raise the significance of this death sentence above the level of a mere execution of a judicial principle to a level of a deliberate act in the interests and the benefit of mankind, I am of my free will willing to submit myself to a medical experiment offering no chance of survival. He was willing to be put forward for a medical experiment himself where he would die so his death would be at least worth something in his eyes. But on the 2nd of June 1948, his execution was carried out inside of Landsberg Prison. He went to his death believing his execution was wrong, and he stated on the scaffold that, It is no shame to stand upon this scaffold. This is nothing but political revenge. I have served my fatherland as others have before me. The executioner then secured the noose around his neck, after a black cap had been placed over his head. The executioner then released the trap door. Karl Brandt was the personal doctor of Adolf Hitler, and at the end of the Second World War, Hitler even ordered the death of Brandt for treason, and for sending his wife, a close friend of the dictator, towards the Allied lines for her own safety. However, he was at the end of the war executed for his horrific crimes, and he was responsible for the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of people, and he was one of the worst war criminals within Nazi Germany. 
Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.